So let's start with our solution to find if this year is leap or not. So first of all, let's create additional variable, a new variable and call this variable year. And now let's print a nice message, printf enter a year. Okay, so that the user will be able to specify what year uh, he wants to check. Then we are going to use the scanf function and to read this information and store it inside the variable year. Now what we are going to do is simply to take our previous conditions that we talked about and try to simplify them. So the first condition, I will even start from the end and I will say that uh, we will check if year can be divided by 400, okay, without a remainder, we can simply write equal to zero, then in this case, we can definitely say that the year is divide, can be divided by 400 without a remainder and also by four without a remainder, right? Because 404, you know that. Uh, and um, even if it's, uh, even we know that it can be divided by 100, but still, if we know that it can be divided by 400, then that's a leap year, okay? Just a couple of terminologies, guys. Nothing complicated. That's the rules to decide if a given year is leap or not. Nothing we can do about it. So in this case, let's simply print uh, this year, okay, or maybe uh, percentage D year, for example, 2000 and whatever is a leap year, okay? So that's the first message that we are going to use, backslash n, of course, and here we are going to print year. Okay, so we are good with years that can be divided by 400 without the remainder. Now let's move on to uh, if, for example, the result of this condition is false, okay? And that means that the year cannot be divided by 400. So in this case, we can say else if year can be divided by 100 without a remainder, right? If we take a look at our explanation and uh, it was the second condition that I've showed you uh, in the presentation, then in this case, we can say that um, this year is definitely is definitely not a leap year because even if it can be divided by four without a remainder, but it still cannot be divided by 400, then definitely this year is not leap. So percentage D, percentage D year is not a leap year. Okay, here specify the year itself. And there you go. Let's just correct this part. Awesome. And now all that remains is basically to say that if the year cannot be divided by 400 without a remainder and also not by a hundred, then in this case, what we have to do is simply to ask the following question, else if year can be divided by four without a remainder. And if that's the case, then we are going to print that the year is a leap year, is a leap year. Okay, guys. So basically, these are just the rules uh, defined for leap years. And uh, one thing that we also need to take into account is what is the final else. So if, for example, the result for this condition is false and for this is false and for this is false. So finally, the last else that takes the result of the remaining uh, options will say that the the um, the, leap, uh, the year is not leap, of course, because it cannot be divided by four. Uh, and absolutely, that's not a leap year. So I hope that's clear to you. Okay, guys, so I forgot to return zero at the end, just to specify it. Uh, so I hope that's clear. That's how you find basically if a given year is leap or not. And yeah, I think this is it. Just remember that there are a couple of rules that you need to, to check a couple of conditions. That's not something that you like, you know, like uh, know it um, and apply it on a daily basis probably. But since you know that you have to write some program and this program should find if a year is leap or not. So your steps are first of all to understand, okay, I'm going to write a program. Then to understand what are the conditions for a year to be leap or not in like general terminologies, just like you've seen in the presentation. And then simply to take this knowledge, like to process it in your head and 
uh, once you are done processing it, you simply will take this information and try to construct it in our programming language. In this case, it's uh, the C programming language. So I guess, yeah, this is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Keep on practicing and I will see you in the next video. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them and we will do our best to assist you with whatever you got. So until next time, my name is Vlad. I'll see you then.